Long now, a Zimbabwean activist is in hiding in South Africa after being allegedly targeted by security forces in that country. Josphet Mzaka Ngulube fled his Bulawayo home last month after receiving a tip-off that the Zimbabwe Republic Police were looking for him. His home was raided by state agents the following day. The prominent civic leader Ngulube had been part of convening the July 31st anti-corruption demonstrations. His family has also been targeted. His niece was abducted and sexually assaulted whilst being questioned on the whereabouts of her uncle. Ngulube now joins us live via Skype for more on this. Good afternoon to you and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us here on the SABC News channel. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? I'm all right, and thank you so much for your time. So we know that uh, uh, Zimbabwe's government has been denying that uh, they've been targeting any activists or demonstrators for that case, saying that uh, the police were only enforcing COVID-19 regulations. You fled your home days before the planned demonstrations uh, on July the 31st. Why was that? Uh, to, to, to correct you, ma'am, I fled after the organized demonstration that was supposed to take place on the 31st of uh, July. Mm. So why the decision so, to flee? Best... Come again. Why the decision to flee the country? Okay. Uh, basic, basically, ma'am, when the president came out on national TV saying he's under attack by bad uh, apples, uh, terrorists. Uh, so automatically it sent a wrong signal to us because this is the same guy who was there during the, the Kukuraundi era where most of the, most people in Matilde, about 30,000 were massacred. Uh, again, it was after they raided my home, they raided my home on the 29th of July where they harassed my family. They came in with uh, seven AK-47. It, 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 it actually surprises to see the guns that are supposed to protect the system of the country being used to uh, to put fear, to, to torture a citizen of, of a country. Automatically it shows that the government is desperate. Uh, in, 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 in killing people, in uh, torturing people. Because this, what should to take you back in history, yeah. this is this is the same guy uh, who was part of the Kukura Wundi. Emerson Nangaka was part of the 5th Brigade that was concentrating in, in, in mass uh, murdering of, of people from Matebele land. And, uh, and if if he's, and during that time, if you still remember, there are people who were called to be dissidents. And after being called dissidents, the next thing that followed, it was Kukuraundi and mass murdering of people from material region. Automatically, it showed that these guys are serious. The way they uh, they, they, they took away uh, my niece from town, they abducted in town, uh, in CPD, they tortured a, you, uh, you, it to an extent of using a knife to take off uh, her blouse, her bra and pants using a knife, it shows that if they can manage to uh, catch me, they might kill me. They might kill me because the, the, the regime is now desperate for anything. They failed economically, they failed yeah. in everything. So I'm, 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 I'm afraid we don't have enough time on this, but maybe you can just give us a, big of, a bit of background here. You were regarded a very strong critic of the former president, uh, Robert Mugabe. Uh, you were one of those who called for the anti-Mugabe protest back in 2016, but you also work as an anti-corruption activist. You used to work in government as the provincial director of sports in Bulawayo, but now you are openly campaigning against this regime. What changed? Um, I, I was a civil servant, ma'am. Being a civil servant does mean you have to support the system, like support the, the, the ruling party in that, in that particular part. Basically, I'm a teacher by profession. I've, I've taught boys and girls who are masters in degree who are here, who have lost dignity, they are washing toilets, they are doing manual jobs everywhere. So the issue is, it wasn't about, uh, about Robert Mkabe. When these guys when took over his couple, his army couple from Robert Mkabe, 
all the all the 17th of November uh, 2017, the promised Zimbabwe a second republic. Pray with the hope that we are going to have a government that is going to respect human rights, the government that is going to provide for the people, the government that is going to do all the good things for But it never went to be the way we expected to be. Mm -hmm. Like now, if you check. Nangako and took over. It took over. It was a coup. It was a coup. And now it tried to please everyone who helped to uh, be, be present through coup. Mr. Gulu, so I, 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 I understand. Yeah. And that that line is breaking, but I understand that you're not the only one who's fled Zimbabwe and gone into hiding. How many others do you know of, and what's the next step going forward? Do you have plans of returning home, and under what conditions would that be? Okay, there are plenty of them. It's not most most people from the opposition and the most activists. We've got activists like the, uh, the other guy who was campaigning on the hashtag ZANPF must go who fled the country uh, over these masks that uh, over these masks such checks and PF must go that uh, people like Nturis Hanana uh, we've got a lot of them so what we're expecting we're expecting uh, South Africa South African President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa to send a, a proper delegation that will consist maybe uh, one of uh, one of one of the delegation to be um, at least the head of state to Zimbabwe for a fact-finding mission because to to, 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 to to deny that there's no crisis in Zimbabwe is just a child's play because the moment when the president of a country says he's under attack, there are terrorists that are attacking him. It means automatically we have a crisis in Zimbabwe. The crisis that emanated from being an economic crisis is now a, 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 a political, it's now, it now it has entered into human rights of the people. So we're, we're asking President Sir Ramaphosa uh, to help chip in in Zimbabwe because as, as, as you speak right now, people are running away, the government is attacking people, people are being killed, people are being abducted. We are, we are, we are asking for static because after this COVID, most uh, uh, countries will be having a problem with, the, with their economy, so they can't continue carrying the burden of Zimbabwe, so taking I, care of Zimbabweans. Are you saying that you will not go back home until that delegation that you're talking about is sent to Zimbabwe very quickly? Yes, I won't go back home until the delegation and a proper dialogue has been put forward. We're asking for a proper dialogue where it will include all civic societies, human rights activists, church organizations. That is going to tackle the issue of proper reforms in the country, tackling the issue of human rights, the issue of ele 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 elections, electoral reforms should be properly. That's when we can go back home, when we've got security from that particular, particular uh, national government or transnational authority that will, that will take an interim. Okay. All right. I'm afraid we have to leave it at that, but we thank you so much for your time. Uh, Josfet Mzaka Ngulube is a prominent civic leader uh, who uh, is one of those who had convened the demonstrations in Zimbabwe on July the 31st. His family has uh, had been targeted, his niece was abducted and sexually assaulted whilst being questioned on his whereabouts.